So tell us a little bit about yourself and, and DG Visionaries. Yeah, my name is Daryl Gray, but you can call me DG for short. And DG Visionaries, my business is all about turning visions into reality through sight and sound. And we do that through uh, high value video production and mobile DJ services. And so we mainly serve clients in the wedding industry, but we also have a, a couple local um, business clients that we work with for their videos as well as their corporate and holiday parties. And so we are just we're, we're making weddings fun again. We're making videos cool again. And all around, we're just audio visual excellence and trying to, you know, make memories and, and good and good vibes and good times everywhere we go. Yeah, well, we experienced some of your good vibes at Founder Factory. That was pretty awesome. Did a great job in your signature red <laughs> sparkly suit. Pretty cool. So tell me a little about, um, you grew up in the area, share a little of your, your journey as an entrepreneur. And um, you had mentioned about your dad identifying the entrepreneurial spirit in you. So share a little of your, your background, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. So I am from Elkhart, Indiana, born and raised. So the city with the heart, shout out. And growing up, I was always just into creativity. I was definitely inspired by cartoons and video games that I watched and played growing up. And so one of the animes that I was really big into was called Yu-Gi-Oh! And growing up, I basically created my own superhero card game based off of the, the rules of Yu-Gi-Oh! And not only did I create this card game, but I created a lore around it. We had comic books, we had different characters and backgrounds. And basically, I used to sell these cards as well as these stories to my classmates in um, in school, and not only did I, I I sell these stories in these card card games, but you know I used to play with my dad, and he was like, "Yeah, you're you're very entrepreneurial. You're you're going to be an entrepreneur. You know, you're creating something, you're selling it. People are loving it." I'm like, "That's the first time I heard the word. Didn't know how to pronounce it." And um, although growing up, I got out of the the kind of the the cartoon card game storytelling kind of thing. I, I went into to video production and also that that allowed me to um, just create, but also make it, you know, happen a lot quicker. If um, I wanted to be an animator growing up, but it was just like, it, it takes too long to, to draw all these cartoons and try to flip them back. But videos, I can shoot it, I can write it, and I can play it back in the same day. And so I went from playing card games growing up with my siblings to making videos with them. And even when I made videos, my dad's where it was like, yeah, you're, you're great at this. I mean, it's entertaining. You're following your passion. And also you can shoot and produce and people will pay you to, to work Work on their videos and he all you know growing up he was always just somebody who who motivated me to pursue my my creative um outlets and what i was passionate about that's very cool that's great to have a, a motivator behind you there and a cheerleader so talk a little you were out of the area for a little while so share kind of you went away to college you went down to indy can you talk a little bit about the, the more recent history of your journey yeah absolutely and so when i was a junior senior in high school I knew that I wanted to go to Ball State University because I wanted to study telecommunications and video production and I knew that the Letterman School of Business you know if you know David Letterman he's like the the guy from Ball State and Muncie and so I wanted to kind of follow in that audio video path and so that's where I went and so that was the first time that I had got outside of the region and that was a great experience because it just kind of exposed me to a lot of different people from different backgrounds and different cultures and that was something that I really found when I joined my fraternity Sigma Nu at Ball State. And, you know, it, it, it's funny because I got into DJing in that fraternity because I was um, only one of, the, one, one of the only black people in the fraternity. And so I, I saw these guys on the aux cable. They were playing some songs. And I'm like, man, this isn't really hit. And you guys don't got it. Like, let me show you how it's done. And, you know, I was able to, you know, kind of play some music that I enjoy. We were rocking some Kanye West and some Bryson Tiller and other artists that, that were really, you know, jumping at the time, 2015, 2016. And we used to have dance battles. And, and I used to be DJing, but I also used to be dancing and really just causing a scene, making people really interested in, in joining us. And, um, and that, that was just a great time growing up um, and, and being in that fraternity. And that's where I found my, my passion for music. I've always been into it, but that's when I realized that music is something that you can make memories with, that you can bring people together with, and you can just kind of bridge the gap by finding, you know, similarities or even, you know, being introduced to new, to new sounds and in different genres and artists and um, that was a great experience and um, after I graduated from college where I um, 
came back to Elkhart and I started working in South Bend at WNDU. Um, and so that was my first job out of college. It kind of, once I graduated, um, the, the, the area brought me right back. And I, I love working at the news station and being a photojournalist and I was Emmy nominated for some work that I did there at WNDU with Trisha Sloma. And um, after a couple years there, I decided that I wanted to move to Indianapolis just to for, pursue a, big, a bigger city to see if I could find, you know, a bigger marketing agency or even just a bigger news station and a bigger market to work with um, just to kind of get outside my element a little bit. And so I moved there. Um, in Indianapolis around 2019 and kind of during that transition I also started you know developing DG visionaries I um, started the business in 2020 officially because it was a, a New Year's resolution that in this decade I'm gonna start a business make it official no more playing around with it get the LLC the website and, and make it a thing make it happen and so this was something that I was working on throughout my time at the news station I moved to Indianapolis just really um, knowing that I could just DJ on the side and possibly find another job but what really what happened was my connections I built up in Elkhart and in, in the area um, brought me back because I started doing bridal shows and I started really connecting with a lot of couples who were getting married in that area who found me online who heard about me through word of mouth and it, it brought me right back because I thought I was going to get a corporate job or just a job with a creative agency in, in Indianapolis, but what had happened was just Elkhart and the community around me really gave me the opportunity to create that 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 agency myself with DG Visionaries, and I could you know be able to monetize my own talents, be able to have enough work to do it full time, and be able to have the community around me that I grew up in support me, um, and definitely being able to to take advantage of the opportunities that the Elkhart Chamber of Commerce had, um, the opportunity that the South Bend um, Elkhart Regional Partnership more recently had created um, to, to be able to just meet new people, to be inspired and to, um, yeah, to, to take DG Visionaries to, to the next level. That's awesome. So you spoke a lot about community and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So can you speak to you know, entrepreneurship can be very lonely, but I know you've built up kind of um, partners in your work as well as you have a few mentors. Can you speak to some of your, your mentors that you've worked with over the years? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the the mentor that comes to mind um, that I definitely want to make sure that I mention is LaVon Johnson, and he is the president of the Elkhart Chamber of Commerce. But this was a guy who I, I joke with them that knew me more um, than I knew myself at the time because he had met me when I was about 12 years old old at Pimarin Middle School. He was a principal there and I met him even though he was a principal because I was running for student government. I wanted to be my seventh grade class president. Um, didn't work out, but that's okay. <laughs> and so um, I went to high school and I did become my senior class president. So I am proud of that. I uh, made a comeback. But in high school, I was on the football team and he was the head coach at the time. And so, you know, at that time he was the coach, but also he was my social studies teacher. And so, you know, he was just kind of mentoring me academically during school. And then obviously as a coach, he was really pushing me to strive to be a better athlete. He was really just giving me just great advice all around. And so after I graduated, um, he goes on to work at the Elkhart Chamber of Commerce, which he's still been been at to this day. And um, he really just kind of pushed me in the right direction as far as really thinking about how to create a brand and the an LOC around DG Visionaries, you know, and to be able to, you know, talk to the right outlets. He point me, pointed me in the direction of SCORE and that gave me some great business mentorship and that was all completely free and that was super beneficial. I was able to get the LLC to kind of get the, the motivation to put myself out there and to, to grow my online presence, to realize what a P&L statement, a profit and loss and all those great things that, that, that really helped me out on a day to day. And so I'm very thankful for Levon and he's also just somebody that I, I, I still reach out to whenever I just, you know, want to talk about the business, but also things going on personally. Yeah, that's great. So we talked a little before this about kind of the creative environment in the region. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, with your work, you don't typically do it alone, right? And so can you speak a little to some of how you how you identified partners, how you work with them? What does that that creative agent environment look like? 
Exactly. It, and I'm blessed to get to the point where I realized that I could not DJ every wedding that somebody asked me to do. That became very evident when there was like two, three, maybe four people hitting me up about the same day in like um, late July or in September. And I basically just kind of went back and was like, who are the people that I saw doing interesting things when I was in high school or when I was in college and just coming back and visiting and hanging out with friends? And I just remember going out to this club in Mishawaka. It was called Smith's Downtown, which they, they shut that thing down for better or worse. But um, they used to have open open deck night for DJs. And I met a DJ there um, and his name was Trey. And this was way back when. And um, basically, um, I, I worked with him and we just kind of made a connection because it was like, okay, he loved to DJ, right? And I still had a DJ business, but also I was able to kind of be like be like the manager, whereas he all, um, all he has to do is let me know if he's able to take a wedding or not. Mm -hmm. And I was able to book him. We worked together. We trained together. And so it, it was just barely, really just gave me an opportunity to serve more people, to open up the door for other artists and creatives to do what they love to do. Like Trey doesn't want to have to send emails to couples or have to worry about buying equipment or mm. managing a website and all the day-to-day -day and accounting and all that good stuff. He just wants to be able to do his job and also do what he loves on the side and DJ. And so that's what I was able to do for him. So he's been great. And then also I just met another DJ. It was ironic because the first wedding that I've ever done was for my friend Lorena and Gavin from high school. Mm. And so at that wedding, I met Noah and he from the first wedding I ever did myself, he was just a guest there. He was like, man, I love what you're doing. Can I, can I be a part of this? I'm like, whatever. But he eventually reaches out. We work together. And now this year he DJed his first three or four weddings solo. And so he's already booked some weddings for next year. And it was one of those things where he just saw me in action. He was inspired. He reached out. He studies, you know, music production at, um, at I, at IPFW. And so, um, basically just being able to find other creatives and be able to work with them and find that you know we we connect you're able you're you're not necessarily trying to do exactly what I do as far as DJing and dancing and all that over the top. But at the same time, you're you're personable. You're still putting yourself out there. You're great on a microphone. You know what music rocks and how to mix. And so you're bringing something special to the table. And so um, it, it, it was just really all about just um, finding people who had similar passions. And I realized that the more you put yourself out there, the more people are able to discover you and make those connections to possibly be able to work. And so that's been a DJ side of it as far as video production side of things, you know, just being able to kind of the same kind of thing. I um, just had a friend who was in a video production. We worked together. He actually reached out. His name is John Trey. Whenever he first got into videography in 2015, he was like, hey, I know you do this. I do graphics, but I want to get in a video. I remember just kind of showing him a few pointers now fast forward years later and he's running his own business full-time doing video production and i go to him um first off for any weddings or big big video project and so it, it just kind of grows like that i definitely feel like um, networking and putting yourself out there and not being afraid to reach out to people who you feel like can help can go a long way yeah, it sounds like you're becoming a mentor for others now. <laughs> you're the Levon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, in the making, you know. Yeah. Can't He can't be replaced. But, you know, I'm all about, you know, the reason I call it the business DG Visionaries is because I'm DG and it's my vision, yes, but it's also about the visionaries, plural. And that's the people who work with us. I don't call them contractors or just DJs, just videographers, but they're visionaries. They have their own passions and their own dreams and desires. And if I can do my part to help them reach those goals, then that's what it's all about it's more than my vision what is theirs and also the people that we serve yeah. so i'm curious uh future casting for dg visionaries and then also for the south ben elkhart region what are you most hopeful about yeah so i am just more most hopeful for the the mission of the like the south ben elkhart regional partnership and in, in, in my words to paraphrase it is just like bridging the gap between the, the two communities to just bring different um, entrepreneurs and creatives and just did people doing interesting things together and we were just talking before the podcast that just you know it just felt like it was just such a division between the two counties St. Joe County and Elkhart County and I'm just more most most looking forward to the 
the opportunity to work together, you know, to not have to worry about, hey, we're competing. You're doing your thing and you're taking business from me doing my thing. It's like, no, we can share the work. We can collaborate. We can come together to create new opportunities. And that's just been the most exciting things for me is just being able to, you know, be on this podcast, to be able to um, be a participant in, um, in Founder Factory and network and meet with other, not only entrepreneurs, but, you know, high schoolers who are getting into it, who are coming up and people who, you know, just have aspirations for it. And so just being able to just get people um, together to connect, to network, to, to bridge the gap. It's what I'm most looking forward to because um, I guarantee you because of this partnership, there's going to be somebody that I meet or somebody, someone else who's involved meets that um, wouldn't have happened without the partnership. That's going to lead to a brand new opportunity in this community that's going to, you know, really shake things up already more than it has been. So it, it's, you know, future casting is just definitely, I just see, see the growth of not only my business, but the growth of this podcast, as well as just um, the people who are willing to take advantage of the opportunities who put themselves out there, who do great work and are willing to, to make a connection. Um, they're definitely going to benefit in the long run. It's going to be a great partnership. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much for spending time with us today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Bethany. I've been looking forward to talking to you for a long time, so I appreciate being on. Yeah.